Welcome back. You are listening to Joygasm, a video game and movie podcast. I'm Russ, Xbox Live, Tozer 360. He is Steve, Xbox Live, Stevevich. And there is an awful lot of moving and shaking going on in episode 181 today, July 10th, 2020. We're going to be having a bit of a fun show in store for you. Gaming news includes Xbox Series X, First party game reveal date set, Ubisoft's game reveal date also being set, and Streamer Ninja selecting a new platform after the whole shutdown of Mixer. Our topic of the day is Warner Brothers Interactive for Sale, which you can fast forward to if you look into the timestamps located in the episode's detailed section of iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, so on and so so forth. I'm looking across the table at someone who looks kind of like me. More stout. (laughs) (laughs) Stocky, perhaps? With some blushing brilliance. Oh, Baby blues. Hey. Mm. (laughs) Baby turquoises. (laughs) Baby, uh... I got nothing. <laughs> just, just babies. Just babies. <laughs> lots and lots of babies. I ain't got no babies yet, Russ. Well, that's true. That's I ain't true. got no babies. Although you kind of look like a bearded baby with your bald head. Yeah. I need to stick you in a Depends. Born this way. You're going to be looking like a big baby. Or at least I have the same haircut as when I was born. If you play your cards right, I might even let you suck on my teeth. I don't think anything's going to come out. Though. That sounds traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be like Stewie and Peter Griffin. What episode was that? I Family don't, Guy? I don't know. Not, it's yeah, been too right. many years. Too many years. <laughs> I can't believe it's Friday. I know that we talked briefly yeah. as we were setting up about how this week has uh, right. tornadoed by. Hmm. And it was just last week that we did one of these shows. I know. <laughs> and here we are yet again. It's just, uh, it's, it's interesting to me, Steve. It's mm. not slowing down, which is, I don't know. It's kind of weird in this whole COVID-19 environment kind of thing. I was actually talking mm. to our good old friend Brad about that. Yeah, is he working from home? He is working from home, Steve. Mm. What's interesting is that I was asking him what was new and that sort of thing, and if he had any weekend plans, and mm. he said, nope. Yeah, right. That's one of the things about being in this kind of situation is that you really can't plan to do anything fun other than stay at your house. Brad stays at his house all the time playing games. That's why his gamer score is so high. No, that's actually not accurate. The man <laughs> does a fair amount of eventful things. I mean, oh. he, he loves, like, I, I think I mentioned this to you uh, on last week's episode with the whole baseball card. Thing. I wasn't listening. I'm just kidding. I figured you weren't. You're probably counting the carpet strings. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, he likes going to baseball games. He likes yeah, going sure to different conferences. The man goes to, I, th- I think, a ton of conferences, hmm. some of which I've never been to, some of which I've never heard of. Hmm. But he also tends to, you know, he goes on different trips, vacations, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, sure. He's, 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 a, he's a man on a mission. So, uh, oh, is this your foot? That is my foot. Right there. <laughs> yeah, I've been in the <laughs> same room as you. The footsies start happening all over. <laughs> Instead of kicking my desk, I could kick one of your piggies. Oh, one of my little sausages. <laughs> one of your foot sausages. So what do you been playing? Yeah, what do you been watching? Russ. What do you been up to lately there, Steve Rooney? You know, I think I told you last week I was thinking about getting Legends of Terra. <laughs> so you're going to say something uh, else. I think, like, oh, I think I was telling you last week I was thinking about getting laid. And uh, I was like, whoa, this is taking yeah. a very odd turn. Yeah. And suddenly Joygasm became adult. <laughs> <laughs> no longer the innocent, plucky, oh, double entendre. No, no. Steve went there. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> didn't think I would. That's usually your job. <laughs> now it's mine. You're uh, you're you're keeping me on my sausages. So <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> about getting Legends of Runeterra for the phone. Then I noticed some of the tests you were doing with 
Discord and mm. yada yada. Wait, wait, wait. You, I thought you already have Legends of Runeterra no, on the phone. No, I... Okay, I see. So, uh, I, I, can, I can tell. Sometimes you listen to me and sometimes uh, you just think you are. Okay, I said I was thinking of getting it, but I could not remember my password on my sign in. And so I couldn't get it on the phone. And so that was, if I were to get it, no, okay. I said I could start all the way over I and mean, make a whole new account that would not be linked to the, the account that I have. And I didn't want to do that. Or I just would. And then I would specifically play you while I was doing business on the Bino. Wait, but you also told me a couple of episodes ago uh, yeah. that you had been playing in bed. Like you were doing like five matches before you go to sleep. Be at, at my PC, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not when I'm laying underneath the covers. Oh, no. Oh, you were in your office. I, yes. You made it sound like you were laying in bed and you no. were just chilling, playing. No, that's just your imagination. Oh. I just said, yeah, okay, before I went to bed. I tend to have an overactive imagination. Then I would play. But I didn't say as I was in bed. Oh. I well, I play in bed. Where was I going with this? Oh, right. <laughs> So you said, actually, okay, no. So you were you were showing me some stuff on Discord, and I'm like, okay, great. And I'm watching it as clear as day on my phone. I'm like, oh, this is kind of nice. Hmm. What card is that? I wish I could tell. I probably could if the screen was bigger. And then I thought, well, I have my monitor downstairs where I can see everything just fine. And so I thought, okay, well, if, I, if I'm playing horizontally and the cards are the size of my thumbnail or smaller, I, it, it just kind of loses. Let me ask you a question. Some of the magic. When you were watching me do that, because I think it was yeah. the test. Right, it was the test. Ah. Uh, Oh, when it comes to that, it was the screen full screen on your phone. Like oh, it was yeah. taking the full real estate. Yeah. Because what you can do is you can tap on any one of your cards mm. and it will come up with yeah. like a nice big version. I know that. It's kind of like you're doing the little uh, like right click on with yeah. the Olympics. Yeah, I don't want to keep on doing that, Ron. Well, Steve, the, th the idea is, is that when you get a brand new card, you're going to have to look at it because you don't know what it does. As you continue playing the game, you're going to remember... <sighs> what that card does. Therefore, you don't have to look at it and read the description every single time. Right. So, I've got to get the I'll sign up for a new account on my phone. That's what I, all I was trying to say is I don't know if I'm really going to do it. Well, I think you're going to be missing out, Steve, because it, it it plays really well. on. Well, wait, well, let me see your phone. What Which version of the phone do you have? I have a 7. Oh, I have an iPhone 7. Okay, Steve, that's part of your problem. Look at the size of my real estate. Yes, I and realize that. I don't even have that. the newest iPhone. This is the iPhone 10. I uh, it's not the 10. You have the 10s Max. Okay, fine. 10s Max. Okay, so you but it's have not the newest one. It's not okay. I know that's not the newest one. But, but the, newest, the newest the one? newest one, the newest one is at least the same like parameters. What's the number of the newest the latest? The 12? It's the 11 Pro or something. So the 12 is, is the one that they're going the to be one that they're coming out. in September. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so that one's... I was a little... Uh, but thing it, but, turn but, around. Okay, so you tease me about the phone. <laughs> but it fits really nice in my pocket. Ah, oh, jeez. And I, when I lean over to get something, it's not pushing up against my hip. Ah, oh, jeez. And I only make calls and text messages and take some pictures. Now, eventually, yes, I am going to get a new phone. I'm in no hurry, though. This thing works perfect for me, Ross. Well, I'm glad it does. But when it comes to gaming, however, see, that's, yeah, that that explains uh, yeah, why everything uh, yeah, looks like. Uh, because uh, when yeah. I play it on here, uh -huh. I don't have that. Even if I don't uh -huh. maximize any of the cards, uh -huh. I can still easily see what's going on. Okay, bro. It's a very well-designed game, Steve. Ross, I know about the game. Well, apparently not on the phone. Well, it's the same game, whether you, regardless if you play it on the PC or the phone. I just think it's important to make the distinction that there are certain games that do not translate well to the mobile screen that you can play on desktop. Oh, of course. This is, however, one of those titles that actually works really well on both platforms. Okay, but if I'm playing it on... Okay, whatever. I am... <laughs> I am tr I'll try and get a hold of Riot... You're, you're, you're going to call up the CEO? 
Yeah, I'm gonna see if you. Hey, can you send me my password so that I can play on mobile? I'll, maybe I'll buy. A, I'll swing you five bucks and buy some Shh. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Worth the phone call. <laughs> Okay. What year did the iPhone 7 come out? That was... Uh, like five years ago? It was No, it was four years ago. It was 2016. Man. It was the year I moved out here. It's insane, Steve. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, phone works perfect. So what else have you been up to? What have you been playing? Oh, that's the only thing I've been playing, actually. But <sighs> well, that, that that's a good thing to play. So, yeah, that is a good thing. So you have no progress reports for God of War? No, I haven't. I've been thinking about it a lot, though. I will I will tell you, I've been thinking about it a lot. <laughs> I, you sound like <laughs> dad. Did I, did I tell you the story recently? When he played God of War? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> no. I was asking him, okay, so so for those out there who don't know, so um, because I'm working for 31st Union out in the Bay Area of California, I have one of my cars. I have two cars, my wife's car and my car. My wife's car is here in Texas. However, I had to ship my car out to California. When the whole coronavirus thing just kind of decided to show up and rain on everybody's parade, I ended up having to come back to Texas. So what I ended up doing was I left my car with with, with our parents. And at the time, I was having some car battery issues. And so I was asking him to, uh, you know, just once a week, start the car and just drive it down to the like, you know, the end of the road or whatever. Just sure. drive, drive for like five minutes. All right. So I had a conversation with him and I keep asking, Hey, have you done that? Oh, uh, uh, no, no, I haven't done it yet. No. And it's like, we, I'm like, I keep him telling him like, look, you got to do it. You got to get the juices flowing in the car. I can't just sit there for months on end. So then this, this past week I asked and he's like, Oh, you know, I thought a lot about that last week. I thought really hard about it. Like he kept saying how hard he thought about doing it. I'm like, I've heard this story. Did you do it? No. Well, no, but I, they haven't. That's why I'm, I'm telling you. No, 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 no. Right. They haven't. But I heard that your car was driven. Oh, yes. It, yeah, it did get driven. Yes. Because I called and I said, okay, well, I'm glad you thought really hard about it. And I'm glad you <laughs> thought a lot about it. But unfortunately, it doesn't actually start my car. So I had to ask them about uh, starting the car and driving it. And they did, which I am grateful for. Thank you, daddy, for doing so. But it was really funny to hear you say that, thinking really loud and thinking really hard. It's like, oh, the apple does not fall far from the tree. The thing about God of War is that I'm... I like, I'm, I like how you said that, by the way. Thank you. Is that I, I tr- I, I'm, I'm trying to defeat all, like, the dragons and the bosses, stuff that takes freaking forever. And I'm, I'm like, a completionist. I don't want to go to bed with it. Like, I'm not done, you know? I have to finish it before I go to sleep. And, but then it gets to be midnight. And then it gets to be 1 o'clock. And then it gets to be 1.30. And Such then it gets in. to be one forty-five. And I think, I got a meeting in the morning. I have to go to bed. And then I'm all jacked up. And juiced up, angry. <laughs> and you got your, your main vein in the center of your forehead. Right. And in my pulsing. neck. Yeah. Yeah. If, throbbing. If a mosquito like were to even like pop a straw in there, I would like, I would <laughs> sprinkle across the room. <laughs> Get a meal and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I don't want to play it. I, it's I'm okay. So I'm having trouble finding the time to play it. Because of how I start to react with the game. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to stay asleep at night. Sleep is important. Well, I know, why, why don't you just play the game earlier? Well, you get home at like, what, seven? Yeah. There you go. Just play it for a couple hours. Yeah, we'll see, man. Yeah, because I understand. I, w- I wouldn't really want to play an intense game right before I go to bed either. Because then my heart rate's up. My blood's pumping. I understand, Steve. But I will say, the, we had July 4th over the, this last weekend. It was a three-day weekend. It was great. Oh, it was man. Great. I had a four-day weekend. It oh, was fantastic. Whatever. Anyhow. New man over here. <laughs> man. Kind of. Weekends need to be longer. I totally agree. Weekends I, I, need to be longer. I really do believe that we should, as a nation, adopt 
a three day mandatory weekend because you just, you cannot do enough in two days. Like the first day you're just recovering from the week. So, right. so you're, you can't really do a whole lot. And then the next day it's like, you're playing catch up a little bit. Yeah. You're playing catch up and but also you're mentally obsessing over the fact that the next day you're going back to work. Right. So there's, there's not like it, like that one day where you have the padding. It's like, it's like we have the bun, Steve, mm-hmm. but there's no meat patty in the center. I want that meat patty to be in the center. There. Right. I'm just thinking well, I'm way off topic, but I'm just thinking <laughs> if we, if we just did 10 hour days for four days straight, everybody has a three day weekend. I think we would be actually way more productive. I agree. Anyhow, back to, uh, I was going to say. So it was July 4th and Netflix has the Patriot that we're able to to view. (laughs) And so I watched the Patriot all over again. Steve. What? I think you've watched like every military war movie. I'm a little bit of a sucker for it. I mean, especially this year, you you seem to have been. uh, What have I watched? Midway for one. Okay. Well, that was trying to get something else on my list. I only have like and Ten there, things there, left. There, to watch. there was uh, we were soldiers. I did not watch that this year. I think you did. I watched it last year. And then there was the Peter Jackson one you watched. What was it called? That was also last year. Are you so? That was, so, we, 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 so it's more than this sh- year. We shall never grow old, is what that was. That's and I right. and I know I watched it last year because that's when the parentals came out to visit, and they haven't mm. been out here. Since December. Uh, you warmonger. Yeah, well, I watch the movies that are tasteful and good. I don't watch just <laughs> movies to go destroy stuff just because. It's got to be a good movie. <laughs> Anyhow, what I was going to say, which I alluded to to you earlier, was, is, has, and always will be, that you watch some of the stuff on Netflix, and it's a bunch of like just popcorny kind of movies. You know, it's entertaining. You watch it. You know, it's fun, and it's kind of whatever. And then you watch something that has been extru- scrutinized, just molded and shaped, and every little drop of quality just squeezed out. I mean, it was so good. You don't know what a five star movie is. You watch The Patriot. It is very well written, well cast, well acted. It's fantastic. And then I went back to watching, of course, Marvel's Iron Fist (laughs) season two. (laughs) And that's the other thing too, is like you go between war movies or like these other movies that involve tons and tons of like fighting or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's great. Oh, so that, oh, you know what I did too? I have no idea. Xbox Game Pass now has Final Fantasy IX. That you can yeah. get. So I downloaded Final Fantasy IX. I didn't know that, actually. It does. At least now it does. Ooh, I'm I mean, take it's, it's, it's not remastered or oh, anything okay. like that. I mean, I'm, I don't really care. I, I It's just the old school game. Yeah. You know Final Fantasy, was it 15? Yeah. I think that is also it Game is. Pass. It is. Right, I know. Did you ever play that game? No. Are you going to play it? Probably not. Oh, wow. Interesting. You um, are very particular with your Final Fantasy, Steve. Well, they all kind of started to seem the same after... Well, with the big spiky hair and the yeah, crazy outlandish yeah. Uh, outfits. Yeah. They the all huge started, oversized weapons. Uh, since 10 on, they all started to look very, very similar. Wait a minute. Final Fantasy Nine was that the one where the art direction actually went decidedly more cartoony? Yes, I've always wanted to play that one because yeah. I always found the the visuals very appealing. Yes, it, and the visuals were very appealing. So I bought that one again, and or bought it. I guess you for, know what they need of, to put on Game Pass. What Final Fantasy Tactics? It might be. Uh, I think it was there at some point. Maybe. I don't know. Well, I hope I didn't miss out on that. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking it was on mobile. I don't know. But I did get on Game Pass Soul Calibur 6. Really? That's the one with Geralt, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah Soul yeah. Calibur 6 is on Game yeah, Pass? Yeah, man. Man, Game, right. I'm telling you, Phil Spencer hit Game a grand Pass. slam with the Game Pass. As long as you have patience. Oh my goodness. I mean, The Witchers. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is on Game Pass. Mm. Not bad. 
Well, I color me impressed. Now, the <laughs> what other- color would that be, Rod? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ultraviolet. I don't know. But one of the things, though, I'm curious about is: Are you able to get the DLC packs since you got it on Game Pass? Because that is not, I, I imagine, not a part of the Game Pass. Probably not. I probably have to pay for that. Okay, because there are several characters now that you can add to the roster. <sighs> is there anything else that you've been... I guess that's about it, isn't it? Yeah, that's about it, yeah. Well, well you want to know what I, uh, I've been playing? No. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. That's very mean. <sighs> So it comes as no surprise, Legends of Runeterra. Let's just get it out of the way. Okay, we already talked about that. We already <laughs> talked about it. They have actually, did you notice all of the yeah, updates? Yeah, I did. Like the, like the UI updates? I did. All I, the assets and elements that I, are changed? Actually, new? it looks like they also give it a res boost. Am I, am I seeing something? It, to me, it looks like they give it a, like a little bit of a res boost. I don't know. I keep looking at it, and I noticed that they did add some more art to various screens. You could tell it, it was like some kind of like performance update, but also in the UI with some of the, the prompts, mm. overlays, and that sort of thing, they have totally revamped some of the menu systems, and I think it, uh, it's for the better. It looks a lot, I don't know, cleaner? Because the last time I had signed in, it was the background, I guess, where that, uh, was it Jinx or something her name is, the chick? Who, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. She's sitting on top of the building, whatever. Like, that looked a l noticeably sharper. Not like night and day difference, but it looked noticeably sharper. Oh. So I, that's why I thought they may have given at least part of the game. They could the have. Yeah. I love that game. Mm. That game is so fun. It's a good game, Russell. And uh, we haven't uh, played each other since uh, last episode. I right. still, I, uh, I miss you. Mm. I'm right here. <laughs> I ended up watching Knives Out. Have you seen that, Steve? No, and uh, I had the jury was out on that one because they had a director of that one. The same, it wasn't Ryan Johnson. It is Rain Johnson. Yeah. Hmm. Got a bone to pick with that guy. I understand. However, he actually did a decent job in this particular movie. It's a bit of a dark comedy, if I had to try and right. describe it quickly. One of the things that threw my wife off and myself off is that Daniel Craig has a Southern accent in mm. the movie. Didn't you already see this? I saw a part of it, but ah. I didn't see the whole thing. Okay. And yeah, it, it was uh, very entertaining, I must say. It was cool. There, <laughs> there are some really funny lines of dialogue in there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, Steve. Hmm. But I, I do recommend, like, if you and Sarah want to watch something that's kind of off the cuff, it's like has its serious moments, but also has its humorous moments too. Like I said, it's like a like weird dark comedy thing. You might want to give it a shot because I think it's pretty good. I heard Captain America's in it. He is. Hmm. Yeah, the the cast itself. There's like Jamie Lee Curtis. There's that, I always forget his name, but it's the actor. Daniel he, Craig. He was in, <laughs> he was in Man of Steel. He was General Zod. Remember that? that yeah. Really I, good actor. Yeah, he's, he's good. I, I, uh, yeah, I forgot his name. And then there's the, this other actor too. I can't remember his name either, which I apologize, but he was from, I think. Wasn't that, wasn't he also in that fish movie? That was fish movie. Uh, the fish movie where they pick up that dude who's a fish guy from the lagoon they want to run tests on him chick who's mute falls in love with them and um Wait, which actor are we talking about that, that guy was general zod oh yes yeah he was in that <sighs> yeah my mind had already gone on to this other guy whose name i can't remember either yeah. remember that that uh tv show that dylan fields Oh, uh, was that, that was Nash um, Bridges. Now is Nash Bridges. Okay, so I think the main lead from that TV show is also in this movie, which is actually kind of a welcome thing because I haven't seen him in, in anything in a while. Mm. So, uh, and there are other actors in there. Oh, the actress from Blade Runner 2049 who plays the uh, holographic companion. Uh, what was it? What was that? Joy. Joy. She's in it. Nice. She's one of the main characters, actually. Hmm. So I, I think you might like it, Steve. I was also resuming my Resident Evil 2 remake, as you well know, because I called you to like just make sure I wasn't missing out on anything. Just yeah. It was weird because I, I made my way into that secret doorway where I got the three medallions and I just went from the police station down into this little, I don't even know, like a little office safe room looking thing. But I didn't get everything 
in the police headquarters itself. There were certain guns I had not acquired. Also, Mr. X had not shown up and chased me around there for a while. So I'm of the opinion that it's going to happen later. That's going to happen later. Okay. All right. Also, we've been playing some more Sea of Thieves, which right. if you hadn't listened to our previous episode, we certainly encourage you all to be able to check that out because we were talking about Haunted Shores. Actually, don't check out the latest stream, though, because that didn't go over too well, Russ. Well, I, I, mean, I was talking about the last podcast uh, uh, episode. All uh, right. But yeah, yeah the, the Wednesday night stream was uh, kind of messed up, so... <laughs> <laughs> However, I did get the, uh, you know what? Okay, I'm just going to own up to it. So I decided I wanted to try and get more of a stream experience going on the PC because I have Sea of Thieves on that as well. So the problem is, is that the settings within Streamlabs was not set to optimize. And so it was just this horrible experience for the audience, which I do uh, sincerely apologize for. Having said that, I have fixed it. So now if we decide to play Sea of Thieves and stream it on the PC instead of the Xbox, mm. then you will have a much better experience. So, And finally, I also went back to playing Soul Calibur VI, Speak of the Devil, hmm. and had fun going back in. That's a really cool game. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful game. It's a cool game. Um, just wish they had better cutscenes in between, you know? What, uh, from the story? Yeah. Agreed. Come on, Namco. Segwaying into some gaming news, we're going to start things off with Xbox Series X First Party Games Showcase coming on July 23rd. That's right. After weeks and weeks of wondering when the heck this show is going to commence, we finally get a date. So kicking off at 9 a.m. Pacific time, oh. 12 p.m. Eastern time, <laughs> and even 5 p.m. UK time. <laughs> Not to mention that uh, for all of those central timers, mm -hmm. that would be 11 a.m. That's, that's Russ, sorry to interrupt. That's oh, going to be a right. Thursday, FYI. So anybody in school or work? Yeah. Well, that's July. Never mind. I digress. Anybody who's in work, <laughs> um, try and not get in trouble. There you go. The showcase will be game focused and will uh, include showings of new games from the likes of Double Fine, Ninja Theory, and Obsidian. Oh. We also know that it's no surprise that the show will also include Halo Infinite, uh. among others. Better be good, bro. Totally agree. Do you have any final guesses thoughts? Or, no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, guesses or, or estimates oh, or predictions. Well, they got to come out swinging, Russ. I keep on saying it. They got to listen to their community. They were all salivating, waiting for something good. I, I think you, that, that you speak for everyone when you say that because I think everyone's waiting for that big moment. And this really is Microsoft to lose at this point. This is going um, kind of a little bit above and beyond with our topic of the day this time. But I was talking to Bradley about this, actually. And uh, imagine if Phil Spencer kicks off the show mm -hmm. and the first thing he says is, I'd like to introduce some new studios that have joined the Xbox family. Mm -hmm. Which he's probably going to do anyway. But what if he says certain studios like Netherworld or Avalanche? Or monolith. I think the, I think you probably hear some neighbors screaming. Well, I think that 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 announcement right there, like if they could pull that off, where like they actually were able to buy those studios from Warner Brothers Interactive, but keep it on the down low and ha and, and kick off the show with that, that would absolutely give them a home run right out the gate and then go into their first party games that they want to show and that sort of thing. Or maybe that could be their, their one last thing, quote unquote, that they say at the end of the show. Like that would be huge if they could pull that off. I don't know if that's just uh, too early, but at the same time, 
Would, would, would you agree that that would be pretty, I, pretty big? I would say, yes, that that's big. I would not say lead the show with that. I would say... One more thing. One more thing. I would say towards the end, because we've all either been blown out of the water or we're still waiting for something that's really cool. Yeah. Either way. Because if we, if we they start the show going, hey, how's it going? Oh, we're going to run down this roster real quick and uh, get some... We're going to be going, okay, show us the game, show us the game, show us the game, show us the game. And then, you know, we're, we're just going to... We might... It, it might not come across the way they want to come I'm hopeful though, Steve. I'm hopeful because I I would love it like that. That would that, that would cause jaws to drop, right? Like like people want big news like that. But they want they. It's not just the studio. They want the games. Oh well, well because that goes, I mean, that goes without saying. Yeah, I know. I'm, this is the cherry yeah, on top. Yeah, Steve. I know. This is the the whipped cream. Oh, I don't like whipped cream on my what? And, 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 and just on pumpkin pie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but. So, yes, but we're all waiting for the games. But that's like saying, hey, we just bought, I don't know, Studio XYZ. And we go, oh, we like games by Studio XYZ. What games are coming out? They're like, well, we're not working on anything right now. It's not going to be for a couple more years. They're like, well, that kind of deflates it, you know? Well, I think that if they could pull it off and have it be like their one final thing or one last thing kind of deal before they they close the show and make that announcement it's not going to matter that they don't have any games to show the fact that those titles and again this is total speculation because we don't know what's happening but if they were to do that the the just the knowledge of knowing that now those studios have also joined the xbox uh family basically like that would just be huge anyway Next story is that Ninja starts to stream on YouTube. Tyler Ninja Blevins announced that he will begin streaming on YouTube gaming following the news that Microsoft will shut down Mixer. His first stream on YouTube ever premiered today. Well, not today. Excuse me. It was a few days ago, July 8th. Ninja left Twitch in 2019 to join Mixer, but since the service will no longer exist at the end of July, all eyes we're on Ninja to see whether he would return to Twitch or choose another platform. Ninja reportedly declined to join Facebook's streaming service. Now, this is big when I read this article because I was one of those people who were, you know, I was very curious about which platform Ninja was going to do. Was he going to go back to Twitch, which of course that's where he got his big fan following and people are already aware of his channel, that sort of thing. Or is he going to wait it out? Is he going to go somewhere else? So it's interesting to me that he has chosen YouTube for now to, to begin streaming. And I think it's a testament, honestly, to the the strength of YouTube in terms of it becoming more increasingly streamer friendly. Because if you think about it, like in the traditional sense, like YouTube is all about, okay, you upload a pre-recorded video. That video can be anything. And then people will watch it based on their interest level, but not so much on the streaming side of things. And that's kind of where Twitch had an edge, where their whole thing was was kind of the opposite, where like they were predominantly streaming, like doing live streams, with the option of having certain videos be saved and, and recorded. So if you miss the stream, you can go and watch it. And of course, YouTube is a juggernaut in this area. And they've been kind of stealthy about it. They haven't, like Google has not been very forthcoming, at least to my knowledge, when it comes to them actually making that that additional feature become readily available. But I mean, it is there. Like you can use YouTube and do live streams on there. And I think they probably have the largest audience of video watchers out of any platform, Microsoft included. So I'm wondering if he's just simply doing that until another platform offers him an exclusive deal and takes it, or if he's thinking about actually cultivating his audience and, and remaining on YouTube. I think either way, I mean, YouTube is kind of like your independent you know, stream upload service in a, in a way. And regardless of where he is, if someone just you know switches apps from Twitch to YouTube, I mean, it's doesn't take them any time. I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I think people like Twitch and they like YouTube, so I don't think they have a problem wherever he is. They just want to see him. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know that he, man, he made out like a bandit when Microsoft decided to shut down Mixer and he didn't take the offer from Facebook. What the crazy thing is, is that it's estimated that he probably made somewhere in the vicinity of like $20 million from the whole Mixer exclusive deal thing, which is insane. And there was a separate deal entirely, which by the way, Microsoft apparently paid him out in full. He got a full payout from his contract when they shut down the Mixer thing. Hey, we're going to shut down. Oh, cool. See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. I got paid. Cool. I did hear about how when he when he started streaming on YouTube, though, he still had his little tip jar out, so to speak. And so he was getting like little, uh, you know, so-and-so gave Ninja $3 and that sort of thing here and there. And that's one of the things that I think leaves a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth because it's like, dude, you just got a huge payout worth more money than I will ever make in my entire life. Right. You don't need to turn on the little tip jar thing and get yeah, you know, additional pay me tips. More. <laughs> well, especially considering that a lot of these, a lot of his viewers are most likely kids. You know, you have kids, you have teenagers, they don't have real careers yet or jobs, but but they're infatuated with the celebrityism that Ninja has and they enjoy watching him. And so it's probably a lot of these youngsters who are just like, here's my, my allowance money. Here, take my $3. You're so awesome, Ninja. Oh, thanks, kid. Give me that. <laughs> uh, thanks, Pink Cuddles. Uh, anyway, back to the game. <laughs> 22. Yeah. <laughs> G. <laughs> Max. <laughs> I just feel like like he could have left that off for maybe, I don't know, a month or so. It's not like you're hurting for cash, right. especially considering the like his Adidas partnership and his Red Bull partnership, Red Bull, yeah. not to mention any other partnerships I'm not even aware of. It's like the dude is raking in the cash. Anyway, <laughs> there's always room for more money. <laughs> that is true. And finally, our last story is that Ubisoft game reveal begins with a leak of Far Cry 6 game art. Ubisoft has confirmed that Far Cry 6 will be shown at Sunday's July 12th, which is just in a couple of days. And they call it Ubisoft's Forward Conference. The publisher posted a video of Giancarlo Esposito as new antagonist Anton Castillo along with a message seemingly referencing the leak, which is, quote, Anton would not be pleased, end quote. Far Cry 6 has leaked due to a PlayStation Store Hong Kong listing, confirming that the actor uh, is the game's villain and providing a, suge excuse me, a suggested release date of February 18th, 2021. Hmm. The game will also seemingly receive a free PS4 to PS5 upgrade. Hmm. Okay. That seems to be kind of the popular thing nowadays. When you, if you have a, a title that's coming out kind of at the end of the current gen life cycle, that somehow they've been able to easily put a something, something in there for the next gen. Well, I think that also too, if if PlayStation, so if if PlayStation doesn't have enough units to go around over the holidays and their suppliers and their builders and whatnot stuff to make more units and there's Johnny who wants one and he wants to play Far Cry and he's still got his PS4 well Ubisoft's not going to want Johnny to wait to, uh, to buy the game if he mm. can buy himself a copy mm. he's they're going to want him to buy the copy like now mm -hmm. and so it makes perfect sense for them to go, hey, Johnny, you know what? You could get a head start, buy the game, put it on your PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And then once you get your PS5, whenever Sony catches up, you got your free upgrade waiting for that. I think that's yeah, people uh, keeping smiles on faces, Russ. I'd like to see it. I would like to see it. I do have a few more details about the whole Far Cry nah, we don't game. Care. I'm According to the description in the <laughs> listing, the <laughs> game's plot is staged on the island. Oh! Kind of like Far Cry 3, huh? <laughs> going back to basics. And I was going to say, you are a Far Cry fan, so you may recognize some of these things, or maybe it's, it sounds very familiar to you. But uh, the island name apparently is called Yara, the largest Far Cry playground to date, and a tropical paradise frozen <laughs> in time. <laughs> Which sounds something like perhaps a Cuban setting. Mm, sounds it, right up my alley. Sounds something like a Cuban setting, man. Yeah. 
<laughs> they are not on my level. No. Uh, Mr. Esposito's character is seemingly called Antoine Castillo, as I mentioned earlier, and serves as the dictator of the island. The young chap in the image also below is his son, apparently, by the name of Diego, who is, quote, following in his bloody footsteps, end quote, as he attempts to restore his nation back to its former glory. I'm on it. Are you excited about that game, Steve? I am. Have you played all the Far Cries? I have not. You keep on saying I'm a Far Cry fan. I guess I'm a, I'm a half fan because I, I haven't played the last two. I lost, just, just, I, like, I, I have four and I have three. Oh. And I played through them quite a few times. And I would like to go back to the island. I, I like the beauty and I like I do like kind of like Frozen in Time and you kind of have to grab the, 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 this rabble of, of, of good intentioned people together to save the, uh, your tribe or this little nation or you know you're trying to do the right thing the weapons have like tape wrapped around them you know or like some doom buggy whatever and I, I like that I like that kind of stuff for us. and like the, the forest and the water and the, just the wildlife it, it, it's beautiful it's, it's, I, I like it. I like to, it's a place I like to be. For some reason, I thought you had played all of them, but I guess not. No, I have not played all of them. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it sounds like maybe you are looking to get back into mm-hmm. uh, this one here. Well, that's your gaming news. Well, shut up and take my money. It's time for the topic of the day. topic of the day is the WB Interactive is for sale. There has been a lot of moving and shaking going on and this is actually, there, there's kind of a, a two-parter to this, but we're going to start off with Warner Brothers itself before WB. we go into the, the second part, which actually deals with Epic Games and Sony. But Sony. as it stands, Xbox reportedly is interested in acquiring WB Interactive. And I have some details here that I thought I would kick this topic off with. <laughs> um, apparently, the parent company of WB Interactive, AT&T, is looking into possibly selling the video game development mm. arm of Warner Brothers. Right. So uh, I guess it's my understanding that at and is actually kind of running into a bit of a financial mm, issue or whatever. So they're looking to sell off different types happens. of divisions. Yeah. <laughs> The information is reporting uh, that alongside companies like Activision, EA, and Take-Two, Microsoft is also interested in acquiring WB Interactive and its several game development studios. Whoever acquires WB Interactive will likely purchase studios like Avalanche Software, Monolith Productions, NetherRealm Studios, Rocksteady Studios, Mm. TT Games, and various WB Game Studios across the globe. I want to stop there for a moment and then I will resume later with additional details. But what I think is interesting is you have several heavy hitters who are taking interest. You have Activision, oh, yeah. EA oh, Games, oh, yeah. Take-Two Interactive, That's right. Microsoft. That's right. When I think of, of these companies, I have certain... I don't know. I'll, I'll offer some some speculative conjecture here. How about, how about that? Activision, I don't think, is ultimately going to be very, um, very aggressive I, yeah. uh, or as aggressive as the other companies Probably simply not. because when you think of their ecosystem, it's basically Activision and Blizzard. <sighs> so all the Blizzard games like Warcraft and Starcraft and Overwatch, Hearthstone, you know, the, all the Blizzard-oriented games is within their stable. Right. And then when it comes to more of the Activision side, I mean, Call of Duty is kind of like their main bread and b- a butter of what they do. They, they come out with a, a, a I don't know, maybe a, a few other games that's under their, their sure. label, but it, they're, they're not nearly as popular. Sure. If I look at EA, 
EA Games has some pretty deep pockets, but I think they've actually spent um, a fair amount of money in the licensing department. Like, for mm. instance, for them to have scored that exclusive deal making Star Wars games, for instance, I mean, I think that that was not cheap for them to, to right. score that. That's true. Not to mention their ongoing licensing um, gigs with uh, the various sports, yeah. you know, the sports games, that sort of thing. Sure. So that pretty much leaves Take Two Interactive and Microsoft. I would guess that Take Two and Microsoft are probably the two that will go the most aggressively after this type of uh, opportunity. Hmm. Take Two, I don't think. I mean, I, I think it's pretty safe to say I don't think Take Two has as much money or deep pockets as Microsoft. Hey, Microsoft can just say, "Hey, you guys, go ahead and buy WB, and then we'll buy you." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, wait a minute <laughs> everything's for sale come on now <laughs> don't even think about it microsoft better right price don't even think about it, mike <laughs> let me give you uh never mind <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i will continue on here with uh, additional details is that it's important to note that the acquisition of WB Interactive will not mean any of the interested companies like Microsoft or Activision will own characters like Batman or Harry Potter. Instead, potential buyers will have to negotiate licensing deals so studios like Rocksteady can still create new games based on DC Comics, for example, or any other Warner Brothers characters. So I want to stop there again. That is a big deal, too, because on the one hand, you have studios that by themselves are very talented. Mm. They, I mean, when you think of like Rocksteady Studios, right, for example, right, yeah, right. need I say more? No. Another Realm Studios, they're the makers of Mortal Kombat. You know, don't need to say anything else after that. Either. Sure, Russ. Even, you know, like with the Harry Potter license. That's oh, hold the phone. That's okay. one of the, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> other studios that is, is worthy of mention. So anyway, I, you know, I, I think it's safe to say too, that when it comes to the licensing part of things, like if Microsoft were to acquire WB interactive, I think it goes without saying that they would also put together some kind of licensing deal with Warner brothers in order for them to continue making games based off of those movie licenses. Cause that's just a squandered opportunity. Otherwise, what do you think? Here's my question. Mm -hmm. So WB Interactive, right, is not the same thing as WB distributing, right? Or is it? Because if you, okay, you put in The Witcher 3, the first thing you see, oh, actually, I haven't seen either the first or the second, but one of the two. It says WB Interactive. It says WB, that's like Warner Brothers Game Interactive, something like that. But they were the distributor of The Witcher 3. So, would that mean, like, if CD Projekt Red used WB as a distributor, would Microsoft have exclusive sort of rights to the next possible Witcher game? Is that what it means? I think it's a possibility, but uh -huh. at the same time, though, I do think that this type of arrangement would be very surgical in nature, where mm. they would say, look, we are offering just this. We're looking to offload our different gaming studios. So we're, we're, you know, here are the prices mm. that we would like to start at. And then, you know, they'll probably have some kind of bidding war based off of that. And once that is settled, then they're going to go into the licensing side of things and be like, okay, now that we have the studios, we would like to talk about a, a ongoing relationship to license these different properties. Right. But having said that games like Mortal Kombat, for instance, that is a license that is owned by NetherRealm Studios. You know, Ed Boon, who mm -hmm. was one of the OGs uh, who worked on the arcade Mortal Kombat, right. he's the studio head over at NetherRealm. And so I believe that whoever were to acquire NetherRealm would just get that. Now, they also make the Injustice series, which I'm a big fan of. Injustice is based off of the DC license. Warner Brothers owns the rights to DC. So that's where the negotiating would come into play. 
Acquiring WB Interactive will massively increase the number of Xbox Studios developers. Microsoft already purchased high-profile developers, including Ninja Theory, Obsidian, Double Fine, and more. A WB Interactive purchase will add studios like NetherRealm, like we just talked about, and potentially the license to develop DC and Harry Potter games. Um... Similar to actually to how Insomniac has the license to develop Spider-Man games for PlayStation. And Sony, as you know, Steve, acquired Insomniac to become a first party. And so they were able to negotiate that deal, too, for them to continue working on (laughs) Spider-Man. Said (laughs) Spider-Man. So a lot of this stuff, you know, I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but... Apparently, news that AT and T is looking to sell the WB Interactive Trim brand. That. Yes. Yeah, it broke last month, which I actually missed. I'm kind of surprised mm, that surprised I didn't too. see that. But mm. the parent company is looking to pay down its 154 billion dollar debt, and a sale of WB Interactive is potentially valued mm. at four billion dollars. So hey, instead of being 154 billion dollars in debt, you could be 150 billion dollars in debt. Please, <laughs> how little that needle moves. Man, that's, uh, <laughs> wow. Wowza. Anyway, what are your thoughts in terms of, like, if, if Microsoft were to pull this off and actually have these studios join their first party family? Hmm. Well, Russ, I think it all comes down to the games. And I think that when people are going to go, hey, should I buy a PlayStation or should I buy an Xbox? You're going to think of, hey, well, what what games are exclusively for each and each system? Each, you know, what's available for PlayStation? What's available for Xbox? And if one system has the better games, more people are going to buy that. And I think actually people bought more PlayStations than Xboxes, if I'm not... uh, Correct. Yeah. So, people are liking those games more. Now, it's not to say Xbox had less quality games. People just like the games more on PlayStation. So, it might be the move of saying, hey, well, you like those? Well, now they're going to make games for us. Yeah, and I think that Microsoft, this generation, struggled a lot with Mm. more of those exclusive story-driven games like we've talked about in the past, where Sony has had a number Uh on PS4. So, also, too, like with with their E3 show, they'll say, oh, you know, exclusive. Well, actually, it won't say exclusive. World premiere. World premiere. But it'll be during the the Microsoft conference. And then you're going, okay, what are you going to show? (laughs) And then they'll show something, but world premiere doesn't mean exclusive. And so they'll use Microsoft's time to show whatever game and then it'll actually be available for both systems. Right. So you're like, well, that's kind of a letdown in a way. Like I'm watching, like anybody from PlayStation can watch Microsoft show and go, great, I'm buying that one for PlayStation. I'm buying that one. That's glad Microsoft's paying for all of Sony's, uh, you know, cross-platform <laughs> advertising. So um, I think they're trying to, to maybe dwindle that and so they can have more exclusives and not just premieres. Yeah, I totally agree. I think... If they were to actually win the acquisition, I think that that would be a really shrewd move for Microsoft. It would definitely be a salvo answer back at Sony because Sony really came in quick and and aggressively got Insomniac. And Insomniac is another great studio. I'm particularly fascinated by this type of behavior because it's been a while since we have seen so many like like triple A high profile studios actually be, be for sale and how you have these huge publishers swoop in and try and get them. And it kind of brings me back to the older days. Like, you know, when Nintendo had their NES and Super NES, they had, if you recall, like this really like super exclusive deal with like Konami and Capcom and I think even Acclaim back in the day. Like yeah. they, 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 were, they, they basically had like all of the best Japanese game developers make games specifically for their system. And that was, I mean, that was close to a monopoly in a way. And if you recall, there was like this really big lawsuit court deal thing that essentially forced Nintendo to allow the developers to become third party developers. And I think it's interesting to see how now we're, we're looking at various developers who've been on their own and I, I don't, I, it's, it's difficult to really, understand where the appetite is coming from 
But I can say when it comes to Microsoft side of things, like their their bread and butter really, when you think of like the games that you can rely on from their first party game, you know, game studios, what is it like Gears of War, Forza, Halo? I mean, is that it? It used to be Fable, but then Fable has no showed for a long time. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the the situations that they find themselves in. And like, for instance, something that that just came to mind to me is if they were to get, for instance, Mortal Kombat, Mm. imagine having, because, you know, you think about like, like exclusive first party titles for any given system. And there's kind of the, the expected ones. Like, you know, you got to have like quote unquote, the racing game, right? Right. Whether it's Gran Turismo or it's Forza or whatever. Sure. Well, you want to fit a lot of the genres. Exactly. Or yeah. like you have like the killer app, uh, you know, triple a first person shooter title, right. For, you know, it's exclusive to, to this system or whatever else. Right. What's interesting though, is that you've never seen that with a fighting game. I mean, if you think about it, there are certain fighting games that are extremely successful, really lucrative, very popular, huge fan following, I mean, whether it's street fighter Mortal Kombat, mm. I would even argue Injustice has really started to make a name for itself, especially with Injustice 2. I think there's um, a lot of folks like myself who are excited to see Injustice 3, even Soul Calibur. To a smaller extent, Dead or Alive, you know, I, I think that, that it's not as popular or big as some of these other uh, tried and true fighting games, but that would be really big all of a sudden, like have that's like, oh, you want to play Mortal Kombat? You got to play it on Xbox. So very, very curious, I must say. But also too, like like when I look at Monolith Productions in particular, as well as Rocksteady Studios, even Avalanche Studios to a certain extent, they specialize in single player story driven games. Oh, snap. Uh Mm. And we have talked many times about how that has been one of the flaws of Xbox. We're like, we want more of that on there, but there really hasn't been much at all. Like Microsoft has treated the Xbox one kind of almost like in, in a, uh, a sandbox fashion where like they'll, they'll make sea of thieves, right? Sea of thieves is an adventure type of game, but it's also very much a social game. It's almost like this chat room on steroids kind of deal where like, you, you know, the funnest part is when you get together with a bunch of friends and you're able to chat make voices, goof off, do whatever. And then, Oh, by the way, we'll do some sailing and that sort of thing. But it was a very big departure from kind of what you would expect to play in a game. I don't know. And you see multiple examples of that within the, uh, the lifespan of the Xbox one. So the second part of the topic of the day and this just reinforces it is that Sony acquires minority stake in Epic games for $250 million. Mm, 250 big ones. Now Epic CEO, uh, Tim Sweeney has said that the Sony began discussing buying its $250 million stake in the Fortnite creator after the unreal engine five PS five demo explaining, um, you know, Oh, I guess they liked it. Yeah, really? <laughs> Oh, we're going to demo this on the PlayStation just because. And there was, of course, talk about how perhaps the financial arrangement was made behind closed doors before the PS5 tech demo was shown just to ensure that it was used to showcase, you know, that the PS5 itself was used to showcase the Unreal 5 demo. But Sweeney countered by saying that uh, serious investment discussions began after that event took place. I don't know if I fully uh, believe that or not. Mm. Uh, I think that uh, an offer was probably just kind of thrown out there willy nilly by Sony. And then the serious like, okay, here's where you sign on the dotted line happened like after like the day after the show. But I think that they've been in cahoots, I think, uh, before that took place. And it explains a lot because we were talking about at the time, we're like, man, how did they swing that? And we were guessing, I bet, or we bet. Mm -hmm that Sony execs were like, Hey, why don't you show that off on the PS five? Like, like that it's <laughs> hey, no surprise Shani. that this was a range. It wasn't like Epic just kind of, well, we decided to flip a coin. Yeah. You know, we, uh, you know, Sony was tails and that's what came up. And so we decided to use that for the demo. Like, no, this stuff is so strategically planned methodically in advance. Elbows were definitely greased. <laughs> 
<laughs> How do you grease an elbow? We, I, we have to rub up, and you don't want the germs to come off on someone else's elbow, so you kind of grease it up a little bit. But, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Didn't Epic Games make Gears of War, or was... To played some part in their run. They did. Okay, so we're going to see a Gears of War maybe on PlayStation? Anything? No. No. Nah. No, Microsoft owns the full rights to that. <sighs> And they broke off. Like the coalition was a new studio that was the the mm. focus of the Gears of War franchise. Or Steve. Okay. Well. But yeah, they've gone. I mean, Epic has been focusing mostly on the whole Fortnite thing. That's like their big game right now. It's been for years. That's their ninja. <clears throat> the minority stake. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. The minority stake will mean that Sony and Epic will be able to collaborate more closely together in areas of games, entertainment, and technology. So basically what that means is that Sony handed Sweeney 250, well, 250 million smackers and said, hey, you're, we understand you're not a first party of uh, Sony PS5, but uh, why don't you start doing things that give us the advantage. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take out the cubicles and just work across the desk from one another. If you recall, though, Steve. What? Tencent owns, I think, like 40% of Epic Games as well. So that also is interesting to me about how Tencent, which is a Chinese, it's a huge Chinese company, they came in uh, a few years back and actually through stock options and whatnot, um, I think... Um, Mr. Sweeney has, he owns 51% of his own company. And then you have Tencent, which I think is the, is the next largest um, holder, which is at 40%. So I don't even know like how much of Epic Games Sony owns with $250 million. Be interesting to find that out. But it's interesting how he has become increasingly open to the idea of having other very large companies with their own agendas come in and, and, take a substantial ownership in that particular company. And I know why that they're, those companies are attracted because Fortnite has just been a phenomenon. It's just huge. I'm trying to think if I've missed out on any of that stuff. But what, what I mean, when, when it comes to you, I know that you're not a, a huge Gears of War fan. Mm. I know that you're not a Fortnite fan. Mm. But I also know that you have a lot of respect for Epic Games as a studio because they make the Unreal Engine and they're filled with to the brim with like the cream of the crop when it comes to some of the best developers in the industry. So what are your thoughts when it comes to Sony doing this? Well... <clears throat> I just think Sony wants a foot in the door because I, any other company who owns, you know, part of Epic who he said, well, we want this to happen. This is what we want this to happen. Sony can just say, well, look, the game's coming out on our platform. Yeah, we only have this so much a stake in the company, but when you're really talking to us about games coming out on our platform, you really have to do what we say. Not all I can do, they're going to gonna instruct Epic on what to do, but... They're not going to be able to say, well, we're going to do this on your platform. We're going to create this, and this is how things are going to run on your platform. Sony can say, actually, since it's our platform, we have that choice. And what we say is, you may get this way. Can we all vote? Huh? <laughs> huh? You know, it's kind of like saying, you own a stake in the neighborhood. But you're also the security of the neighborhood. New York Strip or Porterhouse? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so if the neighbors all go, hey, Russ, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need, and you're like, well, look, it's only me. And it's I'm I'm the security and I can I can basically choose what area I want to focus on. And so everybody can like have a voice and we can vote, but ultimately it really comes down to you. You bring up a good point. Right? Well, not not not, not with what you just said, oh, okay. but a little bit earlier. <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> yeah, and the early beginning of the show. Uh, he, he, I was just thinking. Again. No, 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 no. About two minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. When you were talking about the the whole gear, like who owns Gears of War and that sort of thing, it's, it is interesting to me that Microsoft does not have any kind mm. of ownership in Epic Games because mm. they've had a good relationship with them for years. Hmm. I mean, seriously, like, why do they not have any kind of presence? Like, like if I'm, I'm thinking, okay, huh. you're responsible for one of our best-selling franchises, and you're also responsible for creating one of the best game engines on the market. Mm. 
wouldn't it behoove you to buy some stock, you know, have a certain percent of ownership within the company. It's, I don't know. To me, it, it, seeing Sony come in like this, it's almost like they kind of jump the fence to Microsoft's backyard and went, <laughs> and did some like fun little thing. Like, like they kind of TP Microsoft's <laughs> house and then left <laughs> and went away. I mean, don't, don't you think? <laughs> Maybe. Or what Microsoft is thinking is, well, our system's got more power behind it, more steroids. And so when people look at what the Unreal Engine is going to do on the PlayStation and then what it's going to do on, on the Xbox, they might go, wow, yeah, okay, well, great. Someone's got a stake in it, but I'm still buying the Xbox version. Yeah. And so maybe they're already flexing their muscles. They're like, yeah, buy them. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's just surprising to me because huh? common sense would dictate that, hey, when you have those longstanding good relationships Right. And of course, and this is for just from a, an outsider point of view. Who knows what the relationship is like? Humble opinions. But it is, I don't know, it's, it's the whole thing, like I said, is really fascinating in that there's a lot of moving and shaking going on within these different studios and publishers. And it's all been happening just within the, the past couple of weeks. Mm. And it makes sense because this is the, the kind of time where if E3 was still going on, you have a lot of backdoor deals and that sort of thing going on. But these types of deals in particular, again, last year when Microsoft was at E3, that's when they announced that they had acquired Obsidian Entertainment, Double Fine Productions. Remember Tim Schafer came out right, and he was talking about Psychonauts 2 and how they're part of the Microsoft family. Mm. They also, um, oh, what was the um, Ninja Theory had also joined them. So, that was going on, and I feel like like that was kind of the start of a lot of this, of this acquisition. But my question then becomes, which studios are left once these are all divvied up in terms of independent studios? Because if you look at all these different studios, they have enjoyed the independence of not having any kind of publisher or, or parent company um, looking over them saying, hey, we need, want you to do this, we need you to do that, and basically exerting influence over their, their decisions. I have also heard that Capcom mm -hmm. might also be up for grabs. Mm, boy. Which is also interesting because they own, of course, the Resident Evil series, the Devil May Cry series, Mega Man, uh, what else? What else does Capcom have? Well, Street Fighter. Oh, yeah. Street, uh, yeah, Street Fighter, that's right. Which, by the by, check this. Check this check, out, check, Steve. check, Go check it out. Whoa, Microsoft whoa, whoa. gets NetherRealm with Mortal Kombat. Uh -huh. Sony's counterpunch to that is to acquire Capcom, and they have Street Fighter uh -huh. as the exclusive fighting game for their system. Uh -huh. That would be really interesting to watch if that were to unfold. And I don't really know how much it would cost to acquire Capcom as a company. Uh, what, what do you think, Steve? Microsoft buys AM2 and then gets the exclusive rights to Virtual Fighter. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Did you have any concluding <laughs> thoughts about this, Steve? Russ, I want money. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> all this talk of hundreds of millions of dollars there and billions of dollars over here makes me realize how undeniably poor I am. Yeah. Oh, let's uh, sell some of the billions in debt. How do we even get billions in debt? Steve, I'm going to acquire you for $5. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Make it five fifty. dollars You got to Anyway, uh, what 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 kind of concluding thoughts you got there, Steve? That's it, Russ. You know, I I um, you know, I will have to wait and see. Are you excited about I'm, it? I'm I'm gonna you know, the jury's gonna be out, Russ. You see, I'm holding my excitement until I see the games. Cause all this stuff is a bunch of nonsense until the <laughs> games come out, and then that's where you're putting your money where your mouth is. But you already are aware of putting certain your money where franchises. your thumbs are. Because, like, for instance, Mortal Kombat, you know it's going to continue to be really, really good. I, okay, I'm not a fighting game fan, Russ. I've uh, never been good at uh, Mortal Kombat. I don't even like hardly okay, okay, watching okay, Mortal Kombat. Okay, 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 bad okay, example. Okay, okay, okay. Rock Steady Studios. Okay, 
fine. Fine if they <laughs> if they make the next Batman or if they make like a Superman game. I don't know, some kind of DC really good game, Russ, then yeah. We haven't seen anything from Rocksteady that's been good for some time. Blow up my skirt if I'm wearing one. <laughs> Well, I, for one, am very much looking forward to seeing what happens. As I mentioned earlier in the program, um, I would be absolutely elated to see like you know, Microsoft's quote unquote, one more thing where they all of a sudden have this huge announcement that they have in fact acquired most, if not all of Warner Brothers Interactive Studios. I think that that would be a very, very shrewd move. I think that that would uh, light a big fire of hype under Microsoft in terms of the future. And um, future. I think the the remaining aspect of it is just that they need to make sure that they have a really impressive showcase when it comes to their first party games and make sure that it actually shows off what the Xbox Series X can do. That wraps up this episode of Joygasm. Make sure you tune in next week. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this episode, we invite you to check out patreon.com slash joygasm, which is spelled J-O-Y-G-A-S-M, and consider becoming a monthly contributor. You'll get exclusive perks and early access to the show, not to mention it really helps us continue doing what we love to do. Also, you can follow us on social media and YouTube. Just do a search for Joygasm TV. We've also got our own Discord server up and running, which is appropriately called Joygasm. So if you're interested in that, drop us a line and we'll send you an invite. And if you don't know how to spell it, rewind 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, search Joygasm TV on Twitch to see us stream our gaming adventures live every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. When it works. We'll see you next week. <laughs>